Let's explore the Kubernetes cluster view. The Kubernetes cluster view gives a concise breakdown of everything you need to know at the high level of your cluster. So some basic things in the UI to call out. Top right, you can see this time range. Now, remember this is all powered by time series metrics and logs and things like that. So all of these things are pinned to a time frame. What that means is that you're getting a view of the last 15 minutes of your cluster. You can extend this to, for example, extend this to the last 24 hours. Obviously, longer time frames will take longer to load. It's just worth pointing out. But if you have a longer time frame, then you have a, a larger sampling frame for data, if you like. So it's, it's worth mentioning that. Now, from the cluster view, you can see some details. If you click this drop down here, you can actually select the different clusters. So this supports a multi-cluster uh, setup as well. On the top, you'll see a count of your nodes, namespaces, daemon sets, deployments, and pods. This is useful um, for tracking, especially node counts. It's especially useful for tracking the scale of your cluster. Now, down here is really nice. And we're going to break down the um, the utilization of CPU and memory in your cluster. So if your cl your, this cl current cluster is f almost 40% underutilizing its CPU, so that represents a serious cost optimization that could be made and a lot of money that could be saved there. Same thing with memory. 21% of memory is being uh, underutilized. And you can see the uh, indication here of what's actually going on uh, within this cluster. This is really important because it allows you to break down what's actually going on in, in terms of the utilization because it's very common for Kubernetes applications to request a lot more than they need to be safe, but that safety comes at a cost and it's important to track that cost. Then we have the nodes by region over a map. So we can see here this cluster is made up of three nodes all in the US East 2 region. If you have a multi-region uh, Kubernetes cluster, then this is so powerful because it enables you to test your balancing across different zones and different regions. So that's really, really nice. And finally, you can see the versions of your EKS in this case, or the Kubernetes daemon set versions that are on the nodes, or the uh, kubelets, shall I say. The kubelet version is really important because if you're doing a deployment, for example, or you're rolling out a new version, you want to make sure that when you finish, you only have one version of Kubernetes running on your nodes, otherwise you may get some complexities there. As we move down, we can see a breakdown of some of the pods. So we can see here that we have a pod uh, quality of service. So quality of service indicates whether it declares its resources or not and, and what will happen in certain scaling events. Generally speaking, it's good to avoid best effort pods if you can. Um, if you select this here, you actually get a really nice breakdown of all of the pods that meet this criteria. And then by selecting any of these, you can actually jump into the pods view, which we'll explore in a later video. Um, then you get the status of the pod, so all of these are running successfully. However, you may get um, some that are pending or failed, which is really important. And of course, if you do have failed pods, then you'll see, uh, and pending pods as well, you'll see reasons for that. So that gives you some idea of why things are hanging. Most commonly, pods are hanging because there's no uh, node to deploy them to. So this is a really good way of visualizing that. Now, I mentioned above that the, this dashboard is great for cost optimization. It goes into a lot of detail here. So for example, you can actually take, uh, you can look at the top's most CPU intensive apps and memory intensive apps. We can see that the currency service is very, very intensive and the Prometheus service running on this cluster is also taking up a lot of memory. Then we have a top CPU intensive node. There's only three nodes, this will appear obviously, but you can see that they're using 51% of their, their capacity here. Same thing with memory intensive nodes. Uh, we can see that 31% um, uh, of the, the memory intensity had been used by this one node. Same thing with disk as well. So this gives you a very high level, very clear view of what's going on at the top level of your cluster. And in subsequent videos, we'll dive into the, the node view and the pods view and explore how to get into the detail of each individual service that's running in your cluster.